Uh, my name's Paul Zimmerman. I'm here in Indianapolis meeting uh, Pete and the rest of the guys with Motorhome Diaries. And we've been talking a little bit. I was telling them about the uh, uh, federal siege at the Indianapolis Baptist Temple that happened several years back. The uh, Indianapolis Baptist Temple renounced their corporate status and became what they call a New Testament church by renouncing their uh, not-for-profit status and they took the stance that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is their only master, you, that you cannot have served two masters and uh, along those lines they quit withholding FICA tax and federal withholding tax. Uh, their position was that, that, their, uh, that the people working for the church were ministers and whatever pay they received was uh, uh, love donations from the congregation and that it was uh, basically their responsibility to pay taxes. Uh, of course the IRS took a different stance and held that the church was responsible for withholding the taxes and paying the taxes to the IRS uh, even though the IRS admitted in court that all of the pastors who had been paid by the church uh, had filed their taxes and paid their taxes on their own. Uh, the issue was that the, the church wasn't complying, that the church would not bend its knee to the feds. And uh, eventually, after years in court, the feds seized the church and the uh, ministers, Dr. Greg Dixon, uh, father and son, both with the same name, uh, they decided to uh, take the route of nonviolent resistance and they with their congregation stayed at the church passed the deadline the IRS the uh, federal marshals and other law enforcement FBI was involved in the siege I was covering the uh, uh, the siege the tragedy at Waco was still fresh in my mind I wanted to make sure that to do whatever I could do to uh, humanize the congregation when to get the word out and hopefully prevent a type of a Waco situation here in Indianapolis. There are several groups, militia groups, that had offered their assistance to the church and Reverend Dixon had made it clear that he didn't want there to be any violence. He had said that anybody could come and, and give support to the church but nobody was to bring any weapons, nobody was to fight. They held out for about three months uh, the feds, after a while, got tired of waiting, went in, forcibly carried everybody out. People just went limp, uh, resisted passively, but there, there was no violence on the part of the congregation. They ended up losing their church. The last time I saw it, it was boarded up with uh, signs saying that it's now U.S. property. And it, uh, it was once a vital part of the community. They, they had uh, outreach programs. They fed the homeless. Uh, they had a school there, and uh, now it's just an empty building, doing no one any good, and the, the feds didn't sell it, didn't, didn't recoup anything from it, but they made their point that, uh, uh, that they will enforce their, their orders regardless of any moral compunction. The church still exists, and they still meet at places, but it's my understanding that they don't have a brick and mortar church. If they were to have property, that the feds would probably come in and, and attach a lien to it and seize it again uh, because they've never paid the back taxes and penalties that the feds said they owe, even though the feds admit that there, there were no taxes that were unpaid. Uh, they've taken a strong stance. In this world, they're only going to answer to their God and not to the government.